Hey guys, this is Damien from Dame Tech back with another video. As you can see, I finally have my hands on the Galaxy S21 Ultra. This device is equipped with the Snapdragon 888. In this video, I'll be doing a true speed and performance test between the S21 Ultra and the iPhone 12 Pro Max. There are many videos on YouTube measuring each device's performance through opening and closing apps. However, this does not measure the device's true CPU and GPU capabilities, which equates to speed and performance. But more so, it measures RAM capability. Hence, in this video, I'll be using a series of cross-platform benchmarks, as well as I'll be compressing an edited 4K video to 1080p. Be sure to definitely check those results. This will truly show both devices' true speed and performance by revealing the true power behind the Snapdragon 888 and 814 Bionic chip. Last, as a side note, I won't be using Antutu in this test, mainly due to the fact that the developers publicly announced that their software is not cross-platform nor comparable due to the scoring mechanisms for the iOS version and the Android version being significantly different due to different APIs and rendering mechanisms. Like the title of this video, I want this test to be real and show the true speed and performance between the Galaxy S21 and the iPhone 12 Pro Max. With that being said, as I mentioned before, all of these devices that you see in these videos, I've purchased with my own money to test for you all. If you like this content, please help me by subscribing and or liking this video. Thank you for watching. Now let's dive in. For this first test, we will be using 3DMark Benchmark, which is cross-platform, to measure each device's true GPU capabilities. Unlike many other generic benchmarks, I specifically like this test due to the software mimicking a high intensive graphical load or a completely optimized game for 20 minutes. This test will reveal how each device will perform under long periods of heavy graphical loads. This test will also show how each device performance changes throughout the 20 minutes when stressed. This definitely provides great insight in seeing how each device handles stressful GPU loads. Now with these results, it is quite clear that the iPhone's A14 Bionic chip wins in this first round as it pertains to sustained GPU performance. As you can see, the A14 starts the test with roughly 50% GPU performance improvement over the Snapdragon 888. These results show within the best loop score. However, over time, this gap grows more distant. Looking at the lowest loop score as well as overall averages, the A14 Bionic chip is roughly 90% faster in sustained raw GPU performance. Nevertheless, the temps for both devices was decent. I didn't notice any extreme heat. Now on to the next test. The next test is another GPU test, but this time we'll be testing short burst performance versus last time we were looking more at sustained GPU performance. This one minute test will calculate how each device handles short intense activity. This could be gaming and or graphical rendering. Now with these results, again, the iPhone's A14 Bionic chip wins this second round. With the A14 Bionic chip, we are looking at roughly a 60% short burst GPU performance improvement over the S21 Ultra Snapdragon 888 chipset. As I've said before, benchmarks don't tell the full story. Please check out the 4K video compression test to see just how both the CPU and GPU for both these devices perform in real life scenarios. Now on to the next test. In this third round, 
we will be looking at CPU performance instead of GPU. Geekbench 5 is another cross-platform benchmark that can be used to compare the performance in both Android and Apple devices. Geekbench 5 will measure each device's single core and multi-core power, from checking emails to taking a picture to playing music or all of it at once. Geekbench 5 CPU benchmark measures performance in new application areas, including augmented reality and machine learning, so you'll know how close your system is to the cutting edge. With these results, again, the iPhone's A14 Bionic chip wins this round. As you can see, in single core performance, the A14 Bionic chip scores roughly 60% improvement over the Snapdragon 888. In multi-core performance, the A14 Bionic chip scores roughly 20% over the Snapdragon 888. Quick disclaimer, I am fully aware that in other similar Geekbench 5 tests, both devices score higher in both single and multi-core performance. However, I am stressing these devices and doing these tests back to back. Which leads me to the final test the 4K compression test. In this test, I decided to use Adobe Rush Premiere since it's available to both Android and Apple devices. In this test, I've used the same 4K footage on both devices to make this test fair. Please look at the time on the S21 Ultra as a reference to verify the results for yourself. With this last round, again, the iPhone 814 Bionic chip wins again by finishing within 5 minutes and 6 seconds. I had to skip ahead since it took very long for the S21 Ultra to finish compressing this 4K video. If you track the time on the S21 Ultra device, as you can see, I started compressing at 12.18pm and the compression finished at 1.27 p.m. Thus, it took roughly one hour and nine minutes. This test truly shows just how powerful the A14 Bionic chip is. Video compression and rendering is one of the most fair and unbiased ways to test these devices. With games and software, there's definitely room for error due to bad coding or optimization issues. Nevertheless, despite the 814 Bionic chip winning all four rounds to the average consumer, will you notice these drastic differences? The answer is no. Both phones are more than capable of handling your everyday basic task. Now for those who are looking for a mobile device to edit videos and photos, with these results, I'd say the iPhone beats the Galaxy S21 Ultra. However, for gaming, I think both devices are more than capable to handle whatever you throw at it. With that being said, please stay tuned as I'll be doing other gaming and device feature testing. If you would like to support this channel, please subscribe, help this small YouTuber, and like this video. Take care and see you next time.